Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sihan Huan. I am a second year PhD student in Professor Luna Lu's research team in Purdue University. Today, I'm here to present my research about internal curing effect of concrete containing chlorodyne nanosilica, which is also CNS. First, I would like to talk about the motivation and background for this study. It is known that the quality of the concrete curing plays an important role in the uh, concrete structure performance, and also it affects the surface life of concrete material. Specifically, the amount of moisture during the early age hydration of cement greatly affects the development of cement metrics and also the durability of the concrete, such as freezer resistance. As we can see in these two figures over here, um, different methods have been used to improve the curing quality. For example, the use of a plastic sheet or use curing compound on the surface of the new cast concrete to prevent the water evaporation. The reason people are doing this is that the rapid reaction of the cement grains consume the water and also the evaporation of the moisture lead to the decrease of the internal humidity of the concrete. Therefore, the tendency of the continuous hydration and the needs for more water will generate internal stress that cause the shrinkage and potentially leads to cracking, as shown in this photo. Uh, photo. Uh, and to address this concern, the objective of this study is to find a convenient and easy to implement approach of material that improves the curing quality of the concrete and prevent shrinkage. Next, I would like to introduce an important method for the reduction of the shrinkage, internal curing method. The concept of internal curing is very straightforward, using internal curing agent as water reservoirs to continuously supply water, especially at early age, to prevent excessive humidity drop inside the concrete. As shown in this figure, using conventional external curing, we mostly focus on the top face of the concrete slab while the inner part of the material may not be well cured because the, prison, the penetration depth for the external water is limited. However, using the internal curing method, we mix the porous internal curing agent that carries the water into the concrete. In this case, not only the curing can cover the entire concrete material, but also the continuous releasing of the water uh, from the curing agent can prevent the drying and also prevent the shrinkage. As we can see, different types of the internal curing aggregates have been used, and most of them are porous material with high absorp uh, water absorption capacity. Therefore, the key procedure here is the providing, uh, providing of the internal curing aggregates before mixing them with the cement and water. To ensure the accuracy of the mixture design to reach, uh, to maintain target water to cement ratio and target strength performance, we need to evaluate the, and measure the absorption capacity of the, curi of the internal curing agent that is being chosen. Nowadays, internal curing using porous aggregate has been proven to be very effective. But as you can see, the concrete producer needs to measure the water absorption capacity of the, concrete, of the aggregate every time they use it. And we also need to figure out how long we should provide the aggregate and what is the saturation degree of the internal curing aggregate that we are using. Since the, for the most of the time, we have a designed water to cement ratio and uh, uh, target strength performance for the concrete. So we need all this detail about the porous aggregate in order to modify the mixture design. So in this case, mostly the, mix, the, the amount of mixing water. Luckily, we found the material then has the potential to be used as an internal curing agent in a much easier way. Uh, Chlorodyne nanosilica will gel immediately and form flocculation, generate a three-dimensional network under alkaline environment, such as cement pore solution. So as you can see, it works perfectly with our cementitious system and the network it formed could slow down the diffusion rate of the water and ions within the concrete system. Therefore, we thought that maybe we can use it to prevent the water evaporation, therefore reduce the level of the drying shrinkage. Of course, in the meanwhile, since chlorodyne nanosilica is in nanoscale, the seeding and filling effect of the nanosilica may also help the hydration and give us a 
concrete product with better performance. In this slide, show the transmission electron microscope image of the clot and nanosilica that we use in this study. As you can see, the particle size are range from 10 to 25 nanometers, which potentially favors the hydration of the cement by seeding and filling effect. And it may lead to a dense cement metric due to the nano, uh, due to the pozzolanic reactivity of the nano silica. So it can it may it can potentially um, contribute to the development of the cement metrics. Next, I would like to move into the detail of my study about the internal curing effect of the colloid and nano silica. There are th three main tasks for this study. First, we want to know what is the internal curing effect of the CNS and also compare it with the conventional internal curing agent, lightweight aggregate. Therefore, we have a reference mixture without any internal curing agent, and then a mixture with lightweight aggregate. We use the lightweight aggregate to partially replace the sand by 30%. And then we have another three mixtures with different dosage of the CNS to address the second task, which is about the optimum dosage of the clot and nano silica when it comes to internal curing effect. The third task is the evaluation of the hydration of the cement with the CNS, which will be introduced later. The internal humidity of the concrete was firstly monitored by a humidity sensor. As shown in this, uh, the, these three figures here, we drill a two inches hole on the top face of the four by eight cylinder samples. And then the sensor, the humidity sensor was embedded and we use a humidity reader to measure the humidity. The result is shown in the figure on the right. We can observe that the relative humidity for all samples was above 90% after 30 days which is a relatively high level of the humidity. The reason is that when we do the experimental design, we wanted to simulate the infill application where a, surface, where a surface curing compound was used and the concrete was not demolded in order to simulate the concrete slab where only one face is exposed to the air. So now if we look, at the, uh, look closely to the, to the curves, we can see that the mixtures with internal curing agent had a higher internal humidity compared with the reference mix. So the reference mix is in the uh, black color. Specifically, uh, if we look at the uh, mixture with internal curing agent, for example, the one with lightweight aggregate, which is in purple color, and the, we can use the 0.6% CNS as, uh, as the representative mixture design for the concrete with clone and nano silica. At around 30, 35 days, the reference mix has a uh, humidity of around 90%, while the mixture with internal curing agent had a higher humidity of, of around 95%. The mechanism behind this higher humidity for clot and nano silica and lava aggregate are different. The clot and nano silica maintain the internal humidity by slowing down the water evaporation rate in the concrete while the lightweight aggregate release the water for the continual cement hydration and prevent the decrease of the humidity. So this experimental result indicates that CNS has similar internal curing effect as the conventional internal curing aggregates in terms of maintaining the internal humidity of the concrete. And we have more tests to further verify that. Another aspect of the internal curing effect of the drying shrink is, is the drying shrinkage. So we measure the shrinkage of the cement mortar with CNS with the and nano silica. It can be seen from the result that the incorporation of the and nano silica reduces the drying shrinkage, while it is more effective in early age, for example, seven days, the, the bar in, red, uh, in green color. Again, this test further proved the internal curing effect of the clot and nano silica and the reduction in the shrinkage favors the durability of the concrete material. Potentially, we may have, uh, potentially we may have um, denser cement metrics and we may have less shrinkage and also shrinkage cracks during the early age of hydration. To look into the detail, we also test the water solvativity test in order to see the water permeability of the concrete sample that we are uh, prepared. The incorporation of the internal curing agent effectively reduced the average absorption rate of the sample 
by around 80%. Both of the lightweight aggregate and colloidal nanosilica help to get the concrete with lower water permeability. Actually, this result is expected since the internal curing was designed to improve the curing quality, hydration efficiency, and also prevent the cracks formation. So we are not surprised to find a higher impermeability of the concrete with uh, internal curing agents. However, it's also worth noting that the compared with lightweight aggregate, the sample with 0.6% and 1% cloth and nanosilica lead to an even lower absorption rate. So this may be two reasons for this result. First, cloth and nanosilica is more efficient in maintaining the internal humidity. In other words, a better internal curing effect was achieved by the CNS compared with the lightweight aggregate. Second, the protolanic reaction of the cloth and nanosilica and its nanoseeding and filling effect leads to a higher degree of hydration and a denser cement matrix. This lower permeability can lead to a better durability of the concrete, for example, with better free soil resistance, Soviet attack resistance, less, less scaling of the concrete sample and other different property of the concrete material. To, pr to further prove the previous arguments about the re reduction in water absorb evaporation rate by the cloth and nanosilica, a simple water evaporation test was conducted by storing the new cast concrete sample in a 50 Celsius degree oven. It can be seen that the concrete sample with CNS leads to a lower degree of weight lost with time. Therefore, it can be concluded that um, the internal curing effect of the cloth and nanosilica is due to its ability to prevent excessive water evaporation. So it can maintain the internal humidity of the concrete. In order to study the influence of the nanosilica on the hydration of the cement, uh, TGA and IC testing were conducted and the result is shown in this page. The as you can see, the total heat released within seven days and the chemistry bound water was calculated. Both of these two index can be used to reflect the hydration degree of the cement. It can be seen that the incorporation of the cloth and nanosilica improves the efficiency of the cement hydration Therefore, more hydration product can be produced and we will have a denser and stronger cement matrix. To further visualize the influence of the corrode nanosilica on the concrete material, uh, scanning electron microscope image uh, of the mortar sample are presented here. Due to the time limitation, I didn't put all the image here, but if we look at the image with the, uh, of the reference sample, shrinkage crack can be found on the surface of this mortar sample. And this may be due to the um, rapid drying of the, of the cementitious system. So, however, I didn't observe any cracks on the sample with CNS. So this phenomenon, again, implies the advantage of using cloth and nanosilica as an internal curing agent to prevent shrinkage and improve hydration of the cement. Besides from the crack, we also noticed that uh, the, the unhydrated cement grains in mortar with cloth and nanosilica were smaller compared with the reference. However, this kind of observation can be localized and differ from uh, person to person. Therefore, the image J analysis was used to further process the image and quantify the average size of the unhydrated cement, cement grains. First, the black and white image of the SEM photo was obtained, and then the average size of the black area which represent a hydrocementitious particle was analyzed. Here is the result. The analysis indicates the incorporation of this cloth and nanosilica dramatically reduced the size of the hydrocement particles. Each, so in this, in this data, uh, each data point coming from multiple image analysis and the average value was used to compare between mixtures. Okay, so next I, I will have a quick conclusion for my study. So the incorporation of the cloud and nanosilica is capable of maintaining the internal humidity at a relatively higher level, which means it has the internal curing effect. And due to the internal curing ability of the cloud and nanosilica, we observe a lower drying shrinkage and a higher water impermeability of the sample. 
Third, the hydration of the cement was improved by the colloidal nanosilica, and this was based on the result of PGA and IC testing. Uh, the reason may be due to the nano sealing effect, nano filling effect, and also the photonanid effect of the colloidal nanosilica. And the last one, compared with the conventional lightweight aggregate, which is the internal curing aggregates, colloidal nanosilica doesn't require the uh, water absorption capacity measurement, where it can be used in a way that is much is similar to the concrete dimension. So it's more straightforward and easier to apply. Um, last but not least, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to my advisor, Professor Lu, and my lab colleagues. A special gratitude to spe specification product for providing the E5 colloidal nanosilica. Uh, next, uh, thank you very much for, for your listening.